knocking that door out there. That's me. Hello, Roy. How are you getting along? Hello, Charlie. It looks uh, like you're having some music around here. Yes, boy. Have you got your guitar with you? I reckon I have got it. Boy, I'm pulling my hand up a little tune here. Oh, all right. Charlie Poole could scarcely read and write, but was a modernizer. Music was his way out of the cotton mills. Charlie Poole always wore these blue serge suits. They did not dress shabbily with straw sticking out of their hair. Uh, they, they dressed nicely, you know. They, they, they wanted to be taken seriously as musicians. My oldest brother played with him. He used to tell all kinds of tales about Charlie Poe. He would cut a complete flip over the chin, sit down and right back and never miss a lick on his banjo. And he was one of the best dancers he had ever laid out of. Some people have called this millbilly music you know, because there were so many mill workers who were involved in it. Charlie had started work in the cotton mills in North Carolina at the age of nine. About a third of all people who worked in the cotton mills in 1900 were children under 15 years old, some as young as five. And this is the mill crew. And if you look at the front row of mill workers here, there's not a man I would want it to have tangled with. My dad used to tell me, Charlie had cat eyes. He had these gray eyes, and Daddy said he had a very piercing look. He had like a, a hundred yard stare, you know, when he looked at you, you paid attention to, to what he had to say. He was a, a descendant of Irish immigrants. I know we have the stereotypical Irishman who's supposed to drink and ramble and tell stories and sing songs. Well, Charlie did all of that. Yeah, and fight. He loved to fight. He bought a dog to make me think that it wasn't monkey anymore with me. Oh, Lord, honey, take it off. This was a decade of prohibition. Men like Charlie would make moonshine whiskey and run it north across state lines. On Friday nights, they'd gather in a mill house, and Charlie would get in the middle, and the dancers would dance. And it was a, like a catharsis for them, having worked hard in the mills. You know, and I've had people tell me Charlie would play until the sun came up. I enjoyed that. That was a hoot. You ain't talking to me. No, you ain't talking to me. He fed me good, but he can't cut wood. You ain't talking to me. The mill companies in the 1890s would send recruiters into the mountains to hire people to come work in the mills because this would be cheap labor. So the mill companies would print up little brochures with pictures of the houses and this kind of idyllic kind of life that they would have if they came to work in the mills. The mill companies brought people together who've been playing this music in isolation, and they were concentrated in these mill towns. So this became a source of swapping styles, swapping licks, swapping tunes. A lot of the mills had a paternalistic attitude, kind of a social experiment. They would bring in music teachers. Charlie left this training ground to head for New York with two co-workers. In the morning they went in to draw their last paychecks. They sat down at the end of one of the rows of looms and they played, don't let your deal go down. And he said, well, goodbye boys, we're gone. And out the door of the mill they went. Charlie Poole made a small fortune, mixing city music with his old-time fiddle tunes and disaster songs. But some industrialists, like car manufacturer Henry Ford, wanted to preserve the past, even as they ushered in the future. Ford Motor Company sponsored fiddle contests, celebrating the pre-industrial economy that the motor car was doing so much to destroy. Henry Ford believed that jazz was the music of the devil and that hillbilly music was a clean breath of air from the old world. It seems an odd thing to say about somebody who lived in a small mill town in North Carolina and played old-time banjo. 
that he would be a more modern figure than the man who ran the biggest automobile manufacturing company in the world. But he was. Ford was like a preacher in a way. The modern age would bring nothing but disaster. Short skirts, bobbed hair, women smoking in the street. Hell was just around the corner. Charlie Poole liked the idea of hell being just around the corner. He embraced it, and his music is a celebration of that. Mm -hmm.